Prince Harry could have plunged the royal family into a fresh crisis as his recent bombshell interviews may have shown younger royals there is a way out of the firm, according to an anti-monarchy campaigner. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex shocked the world last year as they dramatically quit the royal family to seek a new independence life in the US. They have recently started opening up about their struggles with being working royals, with Harry most recently accusing his family of total neglect when he and Meghan asked for help when she was feeling suicidal. Now Graham Smith, CEO of Republic has warned Harry's comments about leaving the firm because he felt trap could spark other royals to follow in his footsteps. This could potentially include the future King and Queen Prince William and Kate, the Duchess of Cambridge, as well as their three young children, Prince George, 7, Princess Charlotte, 6, and Prince Louis, 3. He told Express.co.uk, Prince Harry's departure from the royal family and his subsequent comments on his life as a royal are certainly helping the cause of a republic. He is showing the world that the monarchy is bad for the royals, and he is showing the younger royals that there is a way out and a better life on offer, away from the stiff and formal culture of the royal household. The way the rest of the family has responded to Prince Harry has also opened a significant culture gap between the royal family and younger people who have been much more inclined to believe and sympathize with Harry and Meghan. It comes as Harry and Oprah released a follow-up show to the Me You Can't See on Friday as they delved into the mental health stories further. Harry's Archul website said the program would begin to answer the question, where do we go from here? The Archul website said, in the Me You Can't See, a path forward, Prince Harry and Oprah Winfrey reunite with participants and experts from the series for a thought, provoking, wide ranging discussion to build on their initial conversations around mental health and well-being. The subjects go deeper into their own stories from the series, the experts share their guidance, and together they begin to answer the critical question, where do we go from here? Harry also told Oprah in the program that his family did not speak about Diana's death and expected him to handle the press attention and mental distress that came with it. He said, my father used to say to me when I was younger, he used to say to both William and I, well it was like that for me so it's going to be like that for you. That doesn't make sense. Just because you suffered doesn't mean that your kids have to suffer, in fact quite the opposite, if you suffered, do everything you can to make sure that whatever negative experiences you had, that you can make it right for your kids. He added his family told him to play the game and life would improve. But he said he refused, as he added, I've got a hell of a lot of my mum in me. The only way to free yourself and break out is to tell the truth. Harry also opened up on feeling trapped within the firm during his interview with Oprah in March, before adding he felt unable to get Meghan help when she felt suicidal. He added he felt compassion for his brother William and father Prince Charles being unable to leave their roles, while he could. Harry said, my father and my brother, they are trapped. They don't get to leave. And I have huge compassion for that. Harry also told Oprah that he felt let down by his father for cutting him off financially and that there's a lot of hurt that's happened between them. And Harry then spoke about wanting to end the genetic pain and suffering in the royal family while promoting his new show on Dax Shepard's podcast earlier this month. He said, there is no blame. I don't think we should be pointing the finger or blaming anybody, but certainly when it comes to parenting, if I've experienced some form of pain or suffering because of the pain or suffering that perhaps my father or my parents had suffered, I'm going to make sure I break that cycle so that I don't pass it on, basically. It's a lot of genetic pain and suffering that gets passed on anyway so we as parents should be doing the most we can to try and say you know what, that happened to me. I'm going to make sure that doesn't happen to you. It's hard to do but for me it comes down to awareness. I never saw it, I never knew about it, and then suddenly I started to piece it together and go okay, so this is where he went to school, this is what happened, I know this about his life, I also know that is connected to his parents so that means has treated me the way he was treated, so how can I change that for my own kids? And here I am, I moved my whole family to the US. That wasn't the plan but sometimes you've got make decisions and put your family first and put your mental health first. Meanwhile, other members of the royal family have been carrying out engagements this week as the firm battles to save its reputation following Harry and Meghan's claims. Charles and Camilla visited the Prince of Wales pub in Clapham to help encourage shoppers to share visiting non-essential businesses again. And William and Kate helped nursery school children scatter plant seeds that will attract butterflies and bees during a visit to Starbank Park in Edinburgh as part of the Scotland tour. However, none of the royals spoke about any of Harry's claims during their outings. Buckingham Palace responded to Harry and Meghan's first Oprah interview in March by saying they were deeply saddened by their comments, but added recollections may vary.